This video is about the theory of the astronomical telescope and in particular how to draw good lens ray diagrams. If you're more interested in finding out how an astronomical telescope works, then take a look at one of my earlier videos on this subject. The astronomical telescope consists of two lenses. At the front end of the telescope you have a thin lens known as the objective. And at the opposite end, the end you look through, you have the eyepiece which generally is a much thicker lens. The two lenses are set up in such a way that the focus of both lenses occur at the same point. In this case I'm labelling the focal lengths FO for F objective and FE for F focus of the eyepiece. Light hitting the objective lens from a distant object can be treated as though it consists of parallel rays of light. Now these rays will be focused, brought to a focus at a point near the focus of that lens. And hence, the objective lens creates an image of the distant object at the focus. This image now acts like, the obje like an object for the second lens for the eyepiece. Now, since the object is located at the focus of the eyepiece, the image produced by the eyepiece is a virtual image. And because it's at the focus, the virtual image essentially occurs at an infinite distance from the lens, producing a nice, easy image, relaxing image for the eye to look at. To draw a lens ray diagram for the astronomical telescope, start by drawing a horizontal line across your page, which is going to represent the principal axis. Then draw two vertical lines, one on the right-hand side to represent your eyepiece, and one on the left hand side to represent your objective lens. You can also draw in the lenses if you wish, although you don't need these for the diagram. Once you've done this, draw a point on your principal axis to represent the focus. It is conventional with the astronomical telescope for the focus to be closer to the eyepiece than to the objective lens, which gives this telescope positive magnification. Once you've done that, we need to start drawing the rays of light. Now, any rays of light coming from an object that pass through the centre of a lens will continue draw moving in a straight direction. So I'm going to draw a ray of light passing through the centre of the objective, which hits the eyepiece about just over halfway down. Now, this will create an image located at the focus, which touches that ray of light like so. Now the next stage of my diagram, I'm going to draw another ray, but this time I'm only going to draw the section passing between the two lenses, and I'm going to draw a ray that is parallel to the principal axis. The reason for this will become apparent in a moment. Now this ray, when it hits the objective lens, since it's coming from a distant object, should be parallel to the original ray. So I can now draw in that side of the ray. Having done that, I can now draw a third ray parallel to the original two, and I know that that ray should also pass through the tip of the image, so I can draw its path between the two lenses, like this, and you'll see that all three rays pass through the top of the image like that. Now, the next step in drawing the diagram is I'm going to take this focus and I'm going to draw the same focus on the other side. Lenses, as you will know, have two focuses, one on either side of the lens. In this particular case, I've drawn that focus six centimetres on the left of the lens, so I'm going to draw a corresponding one six centimetres to the other side. Now, in order to complete the diagram, I can use the fact that this ray travelling parallel to the principal axis, when it emerges from the eyepiece, is going to pass through the focus. So I can complete its path like that. And then we know that when the telescope is in normal adjustment, the rays that emerge from the eyepiece will all travel parallel to each other, giving an image at infinity. The final step in the diagram is just to show where the image is located. And we can do that by taking each of these rays and just tracing back their apparent path using dotted lines. And that is our completed ray diagram.
Now, using our diagram, it's possible to figure out one final very important rule for the astronomical telescope. That is what the magnification of the, uh, of the astronomical telescope is. Now, angular magnification basically is, is based on how big an object appears to be compared to how big it would be if you didn't look at it using the telescope. Now, if you were looking at it using the unaided eye, the size of it would be determined by this angle here, the angle at which the light from the top and the bottom of the image enters the eye. I'm going to call that theta O, meaning the angle for the object. Now, you can see through symmetry that this angle here, theta O, is going to be about the same. Now, using the fact that light going from leaving the top of an object pass, would pass through the centre of the lens, we can see from this line here that the angle at which the image subtends with the eye is given by this angle here, which is theta i, theta for the image, which is the same as this angle over there. Now, using a little bit of trigonometry, if we call the height of the image in between the lenses h, and based on the fact that this distance here is the focal length of the objective lens and this distance here is the focal length of the eyepiece. To a rough approximation, theta o is going to be about h divided by f o, whereas theta i is approximately h divided by f e. Now the angular magnification for the telescope is just given by the ratio of these two quantities, theta i divided by theta o. In other words, how big the image appears to be compared to how big the object is. And this, using our relationships, is just equal to h over fe divided by h over fo. We can cancel the two h's and that leaves us with a very simple final equation. Our angular magnification m is just equal to fo, the focal length of the objective lens, divided by fe. And from this you can see the reason why the eyepiece needs to have a very small focal length compared to the objective lens.